Bishop Brady High School collapsed earlier this morning due to unknown causes. Emergency transportation was called and the student was taken to Concord Hospital. The name of the student has not yet been released, neither has her condition. I now have Jake Saxon, a student at Bishop Brady High School, here with me. Now, Jake, what did you see of the situation? Well, I did, personally didn't see what happened, but I heard someone passed out during e-block in anatomy class. Did, I mean, did you hear anything about it? Well, kids pass out of school from all sorts of things, exhaustion and dehydration, but personally, I think this is more serious than that. Hey, Garcia. Stay tuned to hear more after the break. First tip. I was sitting in class. We were watching some really boring movie about the respiratory system. This really annoying doctor guy was talking. And then I started to get really nauseous and dizzy. So I got up to get a drink of water and that's the last thing I remember. After performing the EKG, we've diagnosed you with ventricular fibrillation, or VFib for short. So what is that? Ventricular fibrillation is this disease where the ventricles of your heart, the lower chambers, they contract too fast and they start to flutter. They basically become useless as pumps in your body and the blood doesn't get distributed. This is your heart. This is the outside. Uh, this is your right atrium. It's on the right side of your heart and your right ventricle, your left atrium and left ventricle. You have four chambers. The atria, the two top, uh, the two top chambers, they receive blood from the body and from the pulmonary veins that come to, go to your lungs. Then you have your two ventricles on the bottom that distribute blood to either your lungs or to the rest of your body. Now if we open it up... Yeah. It's a valve falling out. <laughs> uh, we can see the inside of your heart. And here is your right atrium. And in here, number five, this is your SA node or your pacemaker. This is the group of nodal tissue that sends out an excitation signal to the rest of your heart every 0 0.85 seconds and tells it to contract. It tells the atria to contract before the ventricles because if your blood is filling up from the atria, it needs time to put, get pushed into the ventricles before it can be pushed to the rest of the body. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, these are the two valves in your heart, the atrioventricular valves, and they basically just prevent blood from after it goes into your ventricles prevents it from going back into your atria, which is bad, obviously. Um, this is your pulmonary semilunar valve. This is the valve that, from your right ventricle, it is pumped to your pulmonary, se pulmonary semilunar valve and to your lungs. Um, and then this is your aortic semilunar valve, and this takes blood from your left ventricle to the rest of your body through the aorta. Um, basically, what's wrong with your heart is that your SA node is misfiring. It's telling the rest, it's telling your heart to contract too fast. It, the signal is just erratic. So the ventricles, the bottom parts of your heart, are quivering. They're not really doing anything. They're doing one of these. So if you're doing something like this, it's not as efficient as doing this. The blood isn't getting pumped out. Basically, no blood is the blood is entering your heart, but it's not leaving your heart. The heart expands because it's filling up with blood, and it's just not a good situation for you. If this is so serious, how come I had no problems before? No chest pain or nausea or anything like that? That's a good question. You see, symptoms for VFib may not occur until only an hour or so before the situation becomes an emergency. A person may have no signs of ventricular fibrillation before that crucial hour, which is what we think is your case. Um, also, many symptoms can be confused with symptoms of lack of sleep or nausea so they can easily be dismissed as inconsequential. So what does this mean for me? A healthy heart pumps regularly at various levels of exertion and coinciding heart rates. Cardiac arrest occurs when the heart stops pumping correctly. Chaotic electrical activity throughout the heart causes uncontrollable fluttering or ventricular fibrillation. The heart beats erratically, no longer pumping oxygen-rich blood around the body, which starts to shut down. I was diagnosed with ventricular fibrillation, my life really changed. No more sports or running. Everyone was giving me weird looks at school. It's like they thought I was going to collapse or die at any second. It's really hard to walk in there now. I learned that ventricular fibrillation is an erratic firing of impulses from the ventricles. Basically, my heart just doesn't beat right. Because of this, blood doesn't get to my body as fast as it should, and I feel nauseous and dizzy and extremely exhausted. An electrocardiogram, or EKG, 
is a record of the heartbeat. The machine measures the electrical impulses from the heart and transfers them onto easy-to-read paper. A normal EKG has six main parts. The P wave, the first small bump in an EKG, is atrial depolarization, the impulse that causes the atria to contract. The PR interval, a straight line that connects the P wave with the QRS wave, represents the time it takes for the initial impulse to travel from the SA node to the Purkinje fibers. The next wave, the QRS wave, which looks like a sharp spike down, up, then down again, measures ventricular depolarization, the impulse that causes the ventricles to contract. The QT segment is a flat part of the EKG that appears between the QRS wave and the T wave, and it represents the time necessary for ventricular depolarization and repolarization. The ST segment represents the end of ventricular depolarization and the beginning of repolarization. The final wave, the T wave, shows when the ventricles are repolarizing or recharging for the next contraction. It is another small wave on an EKG. In ventricular fibrillation, an EKG has bizarre, irregular, and random waves, and the independent waves visible on a normal EKG are not discernible. You can see here how the heart rate even jumps from as low as 31 beats per minute to 57. Sarah McAdam, the student who collapsed earlier this week at Bishop Brady High School, has been diagnosed with a disease called ventricular fibrillation. The erratic beating of her heart is what caused her to faint during class. This is a rare disorder for a healthy young woman, and the causes are being researched as we speak. She's currently being treated at Concord Hospital. Hi Sarah, how have you been feeling? A little better, I guess, but I'm still feeling pretty low. Well, we're working as hard as we can to fix that. And I checked your medical record, and it looks like you had a bit of an experience about five months ago. Yeah, I contracted hypothermia when I was hunting with my family. Uh, can you elaborate on that for me, please? Well, as I said, I was hunting with my family up in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, and I was following this deer. I got separated from my family and ended up lost in the woods for three days. A search team found me, and I was diagnosed with severe hypothermia. Things just haven't been the same since. We believe that when you contracted hypothermia, you also had a disease called cold heart, which threw your pacemaker off of its normal rhythm. My pacemaker? Like my sinoatrial node? That's correct. What happened? Well, your pacemaker is what sends signals to the rest of your heart to tell it to beat to a certain rhythm. And your heart basically has three main stages. Atrial systole, which is when your atria contract. Ventricular systole, when your ventricles contract and then full diastole of your heart where the heart is fully relaxed because it's a muscle. The sinoatrial node, also known as the SA node or pacemaker, initiates the heartbeat by sending out an excitation signal approximately every 0.85 seconds. This initial impulse causes the atria to contract. Also in the right atrium is the atrioventricular or AV node, which, along with the atria, also receives the impulse from the SA node and sends it along to the atrioventricular bundle, which distributes the signal to the Purkinje fibers that cause the ventricles to contract. The delay from the initial impulse of the pacemaker to the transfer to the Purkinje fibers gives the atria enough time to finish contracting before the ventricles contract. After the ventricles contract, the heart goes into a full diastole for a fraction of a second before the SA node sends out another signal to get the atria and ventricles contracting again. This is a very delicate system, and we believe that your hypothermia caused your pacemaker to go out of balance. The symptoms of ventricular fibrillation must be treated immediately or sudden death will occur. There are some medications that can be given to control the heartbeat, such as antiarrhythmics like Pacerone and Cortarone. Depending on the severity of the attack and how long the heart stops beating, the amount of myocardial scar tissue may lead to the need of a heart transplant in order for the patient to attempt to live a normal life, which lucky for you is not the case. Uh, for you, the best option would be an implantable cardioverter defibrillator or an ICD, which we would surgically implant in your chest.
This would also automatically send out shock waves to defibrillate your heart should it start to beat out of rhythm. Um, it also keeps an electronic record of the heartbeat for us to look at uh, occasionally just to see if your condition is getting better or worse, how many times you've been defibrillated, everything like that. And if I don't get the surgery, uh, you will be at constant risk. Um, ventricular fibrillation, some of the complications of another attack could be a coma or nerve misfirings, which can cause Tourette's and diseases like that. Also reduced mental capacity. So we believe that this treatment is going to be the best option for you. An implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD, is used to treat a dangerously fast heartbeat. It is small enough to fit into the palm of your hand and weighs 69 to 85 grams. The ICD monitors your heart for very fast and potentially dangerous rhythm disorders. The device is surgically placed or implanted just under the skin in the chest area. The ICD is attached to one or two thin coated wires called leads that are placed in or on the heart muscle. When an abnormal heart rhythm occurs, the ICD sends out a shock to the heart muscle to defibrillate or stop the cycle of rapid twitching. Interrupting the pattern of the rhythm disorder allows the heart to resume its normal rhythm. When I learned that my heart problem was life-threatening without surgery, I got really nervous. I wondered things like if I would feel the shocks from the defibrillator when my heart went off its natural rhythms, or what if I died in surgery? scary things like that. Most of all, what if my defibrillator failed to work? Dr. Nesbitt explained to me that the attack I had was not very serious, but to prevent future attacks that could be fatal, the surgery was my best option. I agree with her, but the thought of having this kind of surgery really scares me, even though she insists that it's just a minor surgery. I think that to prevent future life-threatening problems at schools, every school should have an automatic external defibrillator in their nurse's office or sick room. It could save someone's life one day. Adams, the student who collapsed two months ago at Bishop Brady High School, has been treated for her ventricular fibrillation with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. She is planning on returning to school next month. She is also going to start a campaign to get automatic external defibrillators in every school in New Hampshire. So how have you been since your surgery? So much better. I can finally rest easy and don't have to worry about an attack anymore. That's great to hear. I'm glad we could have been such a help through this. Thank you so much for everything. Sarah returned to school and no longer has any problems. She can finally rest easy and just be herself. She visits Dr. Nesbitt once a month to check in on her and see how she is doing. Soon the visits will spread apart as she continues to remain a healthy, happy girl at Bishop Brady High School, ventricular fibrillation free. <laughs>